In the late 1700s, most people worked in the fields on land they did not own. Those who owned the land, called aristocrats, lived refined lives in elegant manor houses. Servants raised their children and did their housework. The landowners and the people who worked for them depended upon each other. It was a system that had existed for centuries. In towns across England and the United States, a series of extraordinary innovations would alter the way people lived and worked for the next 150 years. Inventors had found new ways to harness nature's energy. They built new kinds of machines powered by water, steam, and coal. The new machines replaced hand-powered tools. They did the same work, only cheaper and faster. Much of the work was done outside the home, in specially designed buildings, the first factories. Rural people didn't have to leave home each day to work at their jobs. Ordinary people used their hands to make most of the things they needed. Before the Industrial Revolution, the poor rural populations had little ways for earning a living. In Europe, many people could add to their income by working in domestic or cottage industries. Cottage workers made fibers into yarn using a spinning wheel. The yarn was sent to weavers to make cloth. These traditional home-based textile workers were the first people to be replaced by machines when the Industrial Revolution began. Mechanization caused the cottage industry to collapse and people headed to factories to find steady work. This dramatically changed the way that people lived. Previous to the Industrial Revolution, 9 out of 10 people lived in rural areas. Back then there was a large poor class, a small upper class, and not much of a middle class. In the late 1700s and early 1800s, large buildings called factories began to appear along rivers in Europe and North America. Factories are places where workers operating expensive, usually very complicated machines, produce manufactured goods. The creation of factories was a turning point in human society because people had to leave home each day to earn a living. This radically changed family life and the way children were raised. New housing for workers had to be built near the factories and as this happened, cities rapidly grew in size while rural populations decreased. And because people had to meet production deadlines, they were expected to show up at the factories at specific times. This meant that for the first time in history, large numbers of human lives began to be regulated by clocks and the ringing of factory bells. The use of steam engines in farming for things such as threshing grain led to greatly increased food production and helped to revolutionize agriculture. But because steam engines burned wood or coal, Smokestacks became a very familiar sight, and air pollution increased to the point that it began to cause serious health problems in the industrial cities. Naturally, as the popularity of steam-powered machines grew, the appetite for coal and iron increased as well. The Industrial Revolution made it possible to manufacture goods rapidly and to transport them by train. While industrialization has had wonderful positive effects, there were also many negative results. The demand for more and more resulted in pollution and the unfair treatment of workers. Housing conditions were often crowded as poor workers shared homes and slept in shifts. Furthermore, the demand for more and more clothes resulted in the hiring of small children. In many cases, they performed jobs that larger adults were incapable of doing. These jobs were often very dangerous. Child labor. This is the face of child labor. Industrialization changed the nature of children's work so dramatically that it became a political and social issue. Children as young as five and six years old work six days a week for 12 to 16 hours a day. Traditionally, children help with the family enterprise, but work in factories and coal mines was much more intensive. 